Hi, welcome to the Australian Fire and First Aid Safety Blog. I'm Charlene Pinnock. Those of you who follow our WHS blogs online at our website, australianfireandfirstaid.com.au, will know that we're currently in production turning them into vlogs for the internet. Unfortunately, they're not ready just yet, but there is a question that we've been getting asked repeatedly, which Australia seems to want to know about, and we thought perhaps that we would address it sooner rather than later. So we've just grabbed a webcam and we're doing this one from the office. The question we keep being asked is in regards to fire training and whether or not it's going to be compulsory under the new nationally harmonised work health safety laws. And the short answer is yes, it will be. If any one of you have read the draft legislation, you'll know that it doesn't specifically refer to training anywhere within the document. What it does do, however, is refer to 16 industry codes of practice, which are deemed to be the standard for those different industries. Those codes of practice refer to Australian standards and in some cases other documents like the Building Code of Australia, which set the minimum standard for those industries. And this is how fire training has become compulsory under WHS. The Australian Standard 3745 2010, Planning for Emergencies in Facilities, is mentioned in the Code of Practice which is mentioned in the WHS legislation and that is how it's been included. There is quite an extensive table of training which is required and we've put it here in the document for you. You should see it on your screen now. What the table says is that members of your ECO, i.e. your wardens, must undergo some form of training once every six month period. Now that does seem a little daunting and expensive at first, but if you bear with us, we'll be able to show you how you can do that quite effectively, undergo all of your training needs and keep your costs down. It also states that every facility must undergo one evacuation procedure at least once in every 12 month period and that all of your staff members must undergo some form of fire training once in every 12 month period. Warden training must be undertaken once in every 12 month period and extinguisher training must be taken once every two years. So what we've done is put together a small table which shows how you can have training done every six months which will meet the standards, meet your requirements cover all of your staff and not actually have you undertake any more training than you currently are now if you're up to date. Thanks for your time. This is Charlene Pinnock for Australian Fire and First Aid. If you'd like to know more about the new work health safety laws, please follow our blog at australianfireandfirstaid.com.au or if you have any questions in regards to safety or the new WHS laws, feel free to send them through to us at info at afa.net.au. Thanks for watching.